keep in mind that velocity relationship and the velocity squared relationship. When I was working as a process engineer, we had to use pitot tubes daily pretty well. Pitot tube is a stainless steel tube that's about height of me or longer, eight foot tall, up to there. And you put it in a duct and you measure airspeed. Aircraft use pitot tubes. I'll put some photos up on Google Classrooms of the one I took in Hawaii Air Museum of the um, Australian fighter jet and the um, Bell fighter jet. They've got a pitot tube. That's what measures airspeed. How they work, they use the same thing. On the plane, there we go, beautiful plane. Don't know what it is, DC-3. Um, they have a mark on the side that is measuring what they call static pressure. So there is a little port on the side that measures the actual air pressure excluding any velocity effect. So it's like got a bit of gauze, bit of filter over it, aluminium gauze, so the air can get through, the pressure can equalise, but there is no velocity, there is no turbulence. Yep. One part of the plane, somewhere it's measuring static pressure. Usually that's 90 degrees to the flow of the gas. In a pitot tube in industry, they're 90 degrees to the flow of the gas. The other thing you need to measure velocity, we know that um, pressure plus density times velocity squared is constant. Static pressure, velocity zero. We've known that static pressure plus that is constant. So all you need now is you need a pipe pointing straight at the airflow. So there's our airflow. And that is giving us a number. Density times velocity squared, then they just work that backwards. The maths is outside year 12. It would be in year 12 chemistry if you were doing year 12 chemistry, but it's not in engineering studies. All you need to know is that pressure difference, the difference between the dynamic, the static, is proportional to the velocity squared. So if you have four times the difference in pressure, you are travelling twice as fast. If you have eight times difference in pressure, you're travelling whatever the square root of eight is. Make sense? Two symbols? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Square root of eight, you're travelling 2.8 times as fast. That's essentially what it is. Your syllabus says, how do pitot tubes work? That is how pitot tubes work. Static measuring point, sitting out the side of the plane, you see them, we're just about to look on photos. Pitot tubes sticking out the side, that's how planes work. There's been a lot of air crashes in the last five years. One of the Malaysian Airlines jets, I think it was. Um, physically, they're flying along and this tube blocks. It's running on autopilot and because that airspeed blocks, all of a sudden the plane thinks it's doing zero. Can you see how the plane thinks it's doing zero? Because the pressure there is now the same as the pressure here. So what does it do when it thinks it's um, stopped? It gives the engines full fuel. So the plane's cruising along, actually doing, I don't know, pick a number, 600 kilometres an hour. The control system thinks it's doing zero kilometres an hour and it feeds it more fuel. And then all of a sudden, the plane goes up in the air, hits stall condition, stalls. There's been multiple occasions where that has happened. They block with ice. You're travelling so fast that everything freezes and you get lumps of ice form on everything. They block with ice. They're heated at minus 40 degrees in a jumbo jet. They are heated to keep, them from, keep the ice from sticking. Anything blocks them, you're in trouble if you're relying on autopilot. Pilots are trained to shut them down. There are also more than one. There's probably five or six on an aircraft in various spots, just for what they call redundancy. Just in case one blocks, you've got another one you can trust.